I mean, that's kind of convenient. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the second episode of the show Power Rangers Zeo, as well as the 157th episode overall titled The Zeo Beginning Part 2. We begin this episode in the power chamber. We rehash the question of what the hell happened to Zordon, and Alpha immediately says, Ah, oh, he's fine. And we see Zordon just float on down in his tube. I mean, that was pretty unnecessary. Zordon explains that they've been building this new place for months just in case, and they didn't tell the rangers because they didn't want to worry them. I mean, yeah, I'm sure telling them that they were going to be super prepared was going to be totally troubling for these kids. Also, Zordon apologizes to Tanya since she's had like a really bad first day in Angel Grove. He says that time is of the essence and he explains that a dark and evil force is coming upon the galaxy. And Tanya is the first to ask if he means Rita and Zed and he explains that nah, it's the Machine Empire. They ask who the hell the Machine Empire is and they want to know what they can do without their powers and what happened to Rita and Zed and for some reason this causes Alpha to start like smoking up a storm because he's getting overwhelmed with questions I guess. Zoran says that in time he'll answer everything but to be careful with the Machine Empire. On the moon, all the baddies are boarding Serpentera, and Zed is still pissed that they actually have to go live with Master Vile. Meanwhile, the Machine Empire is fully functioning, dropping off robotic soldiers on random beaches that may be on the moon. King Mondo is also pissed that Rita and Zed are still alive, and his child blames other people for their failure. But I'm really confused, because wasn't it just the Quadra Fighters that attacked last time? We also briefly meet our new Finster. Orbis and his little buddy Clank. Mondo threatens them that if they don't get rid of Rita and Zed, they're going to be in big trouble. Hulk and Skull are working on their new bike and they wonder why something smells terrible. And then here comes Rito and Goldar walking into the garage. They have no idea who they are and they ask for help and this causes Bulk and Skull to freak out in a panic, screaming and running around the garage. In the power chamber, Zordon is showing the Rangers the Machine Empire and the new viewing globe. He says that the Machine Empire has broken away from something called the United Alliance of Evil to go rogue and attack Earth. He also introduces Mondo and Machina's son, Prince Sprocket. Tommy is shocked even Zed and Rita will put up with this. And Alpha explains that they've actually run away, which surprises the Rangers even more. We also see the machine soldiers, called Cogs, and Zordon says that they need to be fully dismantled to be defeated, which we all know is kind of a lie. Earth is the last place that the Machine Empire doesn't have control over, so once they defeat the Rangers, they'll have it all. I feel like this could have been mentioned before. Zordon says that the future of the universe rests in their hands, so no pressure. Meanwhile, the Quadra Fighters are attacking Zed and Rita and pals on the moon with lasers, and Zed starts to refuse to run away, which makes Rita grab him by the horn and drag him into the Serpentera. That was actually kind of funny. Rita and Goldar wake up Bulk and Skull via bad smells, and the two are terrified, and they find out that they have no idea who they are. Goldar and Rita want to move in with Bulk and Skull because they've got nowhere else to go, and they start begging the two. And then they tell them that they'll do anything, and Bulk says anything, like he's about to beat some monkey cheeks. In Serpentera, everyone is kind of bummed that they can't still live in the Moon Palace, and Zed promises to be back one day to rule the galaxy. Rocky asks Zordon what they can even do without the power points. He suggests that they have to now use the fully re-energized Zeo Crystal, and before he can go on, Billy has something that he has to say. He explains that since there's only five subcrystals, so there can only be five rangers, and Tanya immediately volunteers to step down because she's probably wigging out a little bit and is happy that she just found a way out. Billy says, you know, that's true, you are the newest and yada yada yada, but working with the alien rangers really made him realize that him being in the command center may be more important than him being a ranger. He wants to give his crystal to Tanya, claiming that she is now a power ranger. I mean, dude, that was never your crystal. You've never had a crystal. You would have just inherited Aisha's crystal. Whatever, Tanya smiles about this, even though pretty sure she wanted out. Billy says that he's sure about this, and Zoran says it's not easy to watch someone give up their powers, but he thinks that this might be the right decision. Zoran then tells him that in their time of need, Billy has become a leader, and in case of an emergency, he could always assume the Zeo power. I mean, allegedly. Then the alarms go off, and King Mondo is invading Earth. There's not much time. The Machine Empire say that Earth has no defense systems, and Zed and Rita are gone, so now it's easy pickings. Clank is given order to prepare things for their attack. Meanwhile, in Skull's garage, we see Rito and Goldar cleaning while Bulk and Skull rest next to the Vote for Bulk drum from Best Man for the Job, which is an impressive callback. In the power chamber, the Rangers are given new two-piece morphers, the Zeonizers. These things are so damn cool looking. Zoran starts giving them their sub-crystals. Catherine is given the pink crystal, becoming Zeo Ranger 1. Tanya is given the yellow crystal, becoming Zero Ranger 2. Rocky is given the blue crystal, becoming Zero Ranger 3. 
And in a nice moment, Alpha puts a hand on Billy's shoulder after this. Adam is given the green crystal, becoming Zero Ranger 4. Lastly, Tommy is given the red crystal, becoming Zero Ranger 5. They take off their helmets and they talk about how they feel totally energized, and Zordon says that there's a lot more at their disposal. Then, behind them in the tubes of the power chamber, the old suits and power weapons are displayed, showing the true legacy of the show as we enter the fourth season. Also, I wonder if Tony is confused by what all these suits and weapons are about. Mondo tells Sprocket to send down the ground troops to Angel Grove so that they can start right where Zed and Rita left off. Then the alarms go off and Billy says it's time to go. It's time for a new morphin sequence. I like this because it looks cool, but my favorite part is that Tommy becomes super short for no reason. Just something I've noticed since I was a kid. The cogs are walking around a bunch of debris when suddenly the rangers fly into the scene, posing to the worst song ever that completely drains attention out of this fight. Also, Tanya is having like absolutely no issue fighting despite being 10 years old like two seconds ago. Tommy also does a stupid super kick to the cogs who retreat from them in fear through a portal. Then Mondo sees the rangers and he says it'll at least be like a little bit interesting to have a formidable enemy because they've grown tired of always winning so easily. He even assures his wife that while they'll be difficult to defeat, it'll be that much sweeter when they do. Meanwhile, Bulk and Skull are still being pampered by the golden monkey and the bone man. The four guys walk around the youth center and they meet up with Kat and Tanya and Tanya is apparently staying with Kat's parents now because I guess her parents are still gone. Tanya says it's going to be weird to not have Billy out there and he says he will be there just in a different way. The end. Over the credits, we mostly just get extended scenes jumbled together to take up more time, but we also get a great JDF outtake where he just yells, we didn't protect our power coins, we lost them. To be honest, this two-parter started out as a really strong kind of opener for the season, and then it just kind of fell flat on its face in the 11th hour. It's a shame because I want to like this so badly, but as soon as the Rangers morphed, it actually went downhill from there, especially with the horrific music choice they insisted on for this first fight. Also, um, could we not have found a less convoluted way to introduce Tanya as the new Yellow Ranger? I mean, come on, she could have just been a friend from school who lived with her grandma or something if they still want to remove her parents from the picture for whatever reason. We just happened to be close friends with Aisha from before and throughout the Alien Ranger saga. Then they just switched because Aisha realizes she wants to stay in Africa to help the animals and she sends her crystal back without an owner so Billy gives it to Tanya because he feels it's like the right choice or whatever. Instead of her now living with Kat for no apparent reason. Also, it's official. There's literally not a single one of the original five Rangers acting as the Power Rangers right now, and it's kind of deflating. Billy's obviously still on the show, and this story makes a lot of sense when you look at his character growth overall since Dave the Dumpster. But it's weird that the oldest Ranger now showed up in like episode 17 of season one. On top of new colors for the teens, I actually think this is a really easy transition. Now that Tommy's the true apparent leader, him being red is obvious, while Rocky being blue just kind of makes sense because they made him take on the red MMPR suit without ever truly stepping into what that meant when Jason was the Red Ranger. So how will this season continue? Find out next time, but until then, may the power protect you. Yeah.